my class for for the first week we will learn on chapter one which is biology and its themes and today we will only cover on three subtopics which are introduction to biology branches in biology and also characteristics of life so what is biology biology word is actually comes from the greek words in which bios is referred to life and logos is referred to study so in conclusion biology is the scientific study of life or the scientific study of the living things and we as a biologist should ask such questions such as how a single cell develops into an organism and how the human mind works and also how us as the living things interact in communities so as i mentioned earlier biology is the study of life so what is life actually so life is what living things do like us so life can be studied in a different level from molecules to the entire living planet and it can be diversified into many forms as living things found on the planet earth so living things or life also comprise of same chemical elements that make up the non-living things such uh, such as um, other things and also they obey the same law of physics and chemistry as non-living things do so the current trend uh, research trend in the field of biology is now is that about the stem cell so what is stem cell stem cell is actually referred to the unspecialized cells that have the capacity to divide and also they can give rise to more stem cells as they are dividing and they can give rise to more specialized types of cells so as uh, what we can say here is that stem cells can be specialized into different types of cells so for an example stem cells in bone marrow okay stem cells in bone marrow can be differentiated to produce various types of blood cells such as red blood cells and also white blood cells and stem cells also allow the body to repair injury as well as to recover from um, the skin cells okay so this is uh, the examples of the research that has been done on the field of biology focusing on the stem cells you can read by your own self later and next is the branches in biology there are seven uh, major branches in biology field which is the first one is botany which is referred to the study of plants the second one is zoology the study of animals ecology the study of the environment and the habitat in which living things will live together genetics the study of the genes microbiology the study of the microbes biotechnology the study of the application of technology in biology fields biochemistry the study of chemistry in the living things last but not least is that cell biology the study of cells in living things and there are also five major themes in biology that you have to uh, know in which the first one is that refer to the how the biological system will interact to each other and the structure and functions are interrelated in all biological systems information must be transmitted within and among the organisms life depends on a continuous input of energy from the sun because every activity of living cells or organisms requires energy and also evolution is the process by which populations of organisms change over the time and remember living things are made up from cells so here we're gonna look into the history of the cell study 
So the first one that discovered the cell is Robert Hooke. So Robert Hooke coined the word cell after he looking at the cork through an early compound microscope. This one. Okay, this one is the microscope that had been used by Robert Hooke to uh, look into the cells. That, okay, and then next is that in 1675, after that, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, that he discovered the microscopic animal cells, as you can see over here, okay, in water and looking at the tooth plug he first to discover the bacteria which is the bacteria size is 1000 times smaller than a normal um, cell size okay next is that uh, robert brown okay an english botanist uh, in 1831 and he was the first one to call the duck which is as you can see here the night uh, the nut like body in the center of most of the cells which is then he call it or observe it as a nucleus okay and then matthias uh, scleden in 1838 concluded that from his observation that the cells must be fundamental unit of life meaning to say all living things are made up from cells and next, Theodore in 1839, after he viewing the animals and plant cells, he summarized that all organisms consist of either one cell or more than one cell. And it also support um, the theory in which the cells are the basic unit of structure for all organisms. So we can say that the theater are the first one to discover the term for unicellular organism and also multicellular organism. Next is Rudolf. So Rudolf in 1855 aided the observation, the previous observation, he aided that all cells are actually arise only from pre-existing cells in which this statement support the new theory of biogenesis that being advanced by the pasture that in which he mentioned that life comes from life so all living things arise from the pre-existing cells which is also referred to the life and in conclusion Cell theory indicates three uh, important things. The first one is that all organisms are composed of one or more cells. If the organism is composed of one cell, we call it as unicellular organism. Or if the organism is made up from more cells, we call it as a multicellular organism. And the next statement is that, or the next conclusion is that, the cell is the structural unit of life for all organisms. So the basic unique structure to make up the living cell, living things is come from the cell. And cells can arise only by division from a pre-existing cells, in which this support the statement in which life comes from life. Okay? So next characteristics of life so there are 12 characteristics of living cells or living organisms that you have to remember the first one is that all organisms or all living things able to feed okay and then they are able to evolve they can respire they can respond to surrounding they can excrete the waste from their body and they also can reproduce to produce their own offspring and their body are in organized structure they also can grow and develop and of course they all living things are composed of cells and they can move as we refer to the locomotion and living things also can adapt to their environment and last but not least is that they can maintain their internal 
uh, or balancing the internal body uh, environment through the process of homeostasis. So let's look at one by one of these characteristics of, li uh, of living things. The first one is feed. So feed is a way <clears throat> for organism to get energy and nutrients from their food. Examples, plants make their own food using energy from the sunlight, which the process is referred to photosynthesis. Meanwhile, some animals eat other animals like us to get nutrient and energy. Okay, for example, in the wildlife, wildlife you can find um, a lion that will eat a, a deer. Okay. So the next characteristic is that all living things can evolve. So what is evolution actually? So evolution is a gradual process in which something changes into a different and more complex or better form. And the organism that undergo evolution, they will change over time to survive in better uh, to survive better in their new environment. Uh, examples, the ant eater develop a sticky tongue to catch the insects and then the theory of human evolved from the apps as you can see here that being suggested by Dr. Charles Darwin. Next is respire. So respire or respiration is actually referred to the process of organism that breaking down the food uh, in the form of glucose to produce energy. So actually there are two types of respiration. We have aerobic respiration and also anaerobic respiration. So for aerobic respiration, for an example, aerobic respiration is the breaking down of sugar to produce energy where oxygen is present uh, such as after two minutes of exercise, the body will respond by supplying walking muscle with oxygen. When oxygen is present, the glucose can be completely broken down into carbon dioxide and also water. Okay, as you can see here, the process of aerobic respiration and here is the process of photosynthesis. Next is respond to surrounding organism or living things are very sensitive to the changes either from outside or inside the environment which is we call as the stimuli and they respond to them for survival example is hydrotropism in plants in which it refers to the growth of plants towards the water okay next is all living things can excrete waste in which it refers to the removal of waste products from the body examples in human urine is carried out of the body through urethra meanwhile in plants the excess waste will exit through the stomata such as the carbon dioxide and also water and plants also get rid of the excess of water through the gutations and oxygen is removed as waste products of photosynthesis through the stomata. Okay, as you can see here, here is the process of the gutation and kidney is one of the important organs that involve in the excreting uh, for excreting of the waste. Okay, next is reproduce. Reproduce or reproduction is the process of organism producing their own offspring. So there are two types of reproduction. We have sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So for sexual reproduction, it involves two organisms or two gametes from opposite sex such as a human. Meanwhile, asexual reproduction involves only one organism. For an example, the bacteria can divide to form two daughter cells through the binary fissions. Next is living, living, thing, uh, living things are in organized structure in which they will start from cells that may exist on its own or exist from pre-existing cells to form the tissue and organ. So such we as a, such a um, we as a human, 
uh, for an example, of course, we made up from cell and our cell will make up the tissue such as the muscle tissue, nervous tissue and it form um, an organ uh, such as uh, the heart, the kidney, the lungs and it make up the organ system such as the respiratory system and it will form the complete organism um, which is referring to the human. Okay, next is grow and develop. So growth of organism is actually referred to the increase in cell of cells and the number of cells. Okay, this one involving the divisions of the cells inside our body. Meanwhile, different with the development, development is actually referred to the changes that take place during the life of an organism. So, an organism will get larger if the number of its cells in the body will increase. Okay? So, example, human begin as a fertilized egg and then grow and develop into adults. Next is compost of cells. All living organisms compose of one or more cells. Okay? So, cell is the basic unit of life, as I mentioned earlier. Multicellular cells or multicellular organism made up from more than one cell such as humans, plants, animals. Meanwhile, unicellular organisms consist of one cell only such as bacteria. Okay? And also proteins. Okay, so you can see over here. Unicellular is referred to organisms that have only single cells, such as an amoeba, bacteria, paramecium. Meanwhile, multicellular organism is referred to the organism that consisting of many cells, such as the plants and also animals. Next is locomotion. Locomotion is referred to the movement of organism from one place to another place to find food, shelter, or to run away from the danger. Examples, the bacteria use the flagella for movement. We, uh, such as a human, use legs or uh, our hand to run or to get something. Meanwhile, amoeba use uh, pseudopods to help them to move in the surrounding. Okay. This is referred to the flagella, and this one is referred to the pseudopodium of the amoeba. Next is adaptations of environment. Organism can adjust or change their behavior and also their structure in order to survive or to live better in an environment. Examples. A chameleon will change its color, which is referred to the camouflage process, to hide from the predator. And then, cactus adapt in the dry and hot uh, desert uh, that has long roots, in which the cactus have their own long roots to help search water inside the soil very deep and also has a prickly leaves that help to reduce to be eaten by um, animals. Last but not least for characteristic of living things is that homeostasis. So homeostasis in living things is referred to the ability to maintain a constant internal environment in response to environmental changes. Example, human will sweat to cool off during the hot days to lower their body temperature and also human nervous system helps our body to get sufficient oxygen to breathe and glucose level in humans are maintained by secreting insulin when glucose level high in glycogen okay so this is how the process of uh, homeostasis so class i think that's all for today we will we, we already learned about the meaning of the biology, the branches in biology, and also characteristics of life. So, see you next week. Bye!